Hi guys, Scorridge's Scoo GT here, and today I have a video for you on the Gear Cube. So, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve the Gear Cube, how to get it from a mixed up state to a solved state like this. So, let's get right to it. So, in order for you guys to solve the Gear Cube, I need you guys to know a few things. Um, just a few. It's basically the basics of a Rubik's Cube. The edges have two pieces, corners have three, centers have one. Um, the, the edges basically go in between their two centers, which never usually move on a Rubik's Cube, but they do on this one. But, you know, we fix them. Okay, so first we need to understand how the gear cube works. Now, when you twist the side like this, it actually spins these middle air pieces. So, and it also twists this middle air in such a way that when you spin it once, it's about halfway of a spin. And then when you twist it again, it's completed. So, um, then, because of that, it means that we need to um, be able to... Uh, do all of these, do all these moves within a two move kind of. Run. Now, this means that the um, the cube must be solved in only two turns, like this, like these ones, like double turns. Sorry. So, because of this, it means that the corners, two corners, will always be within two moves of each other. So. I'm going to start by solving the corners. So, the first thing we want to do when solving the corners is to get two of them and put them, link them together. So, say if I'm going to do this orange, so I'm going to do orange, and I want to find the orange, um, yellow, and green corner. So, let's find the orange, yellow, and blue corner because we've already got the green, so let's just go for blue. We could, we could of course, choose the um, orange green and uh, purple, but I'm just going to go for the orange, uh, white, sorry, orange, yellow, and blue, so let's find it, okay, so it's here, now, if it was here, we'd first of all need to spin it like this, so it's over here, and then when we spin it like this, it'll come down, these two dots will join up, and these two will join up, so they're joined up, and we're going to move on to the second stage of solving the corners. Okay, so the second stage of solving the corners. Now, the other two corners of this orange layer will either, they'll be always connected. They will be, they will be connected like they are here. Now, they'll either be here, or underneath these two, when the orange is facing up, these orange corners will have the orange facing up. They'll either be under them, directly under them, or here. Now when it's here, we can just bring it up like that, and then they're together, and if they're here, what we can do is just spin the top, sorry, spin the bottom, so they're where they were before, and then do that to get them all in the right place. So, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next step we're going to take is to align all these corners. So these bottom ones will all be solved. They will all be basically in the right position um, concerning each other. So this one will always be where it needs to be um, in re in re relative to, uh, say, this one. Probably not the centres, but it will be for, for the... Um, Corners. Okay, so next step is to uh, align these corners with these corners, uh, the orange corners with the red ones, if um, you haven't already. So let's just spin the spin the top twice there. So these purple lines with purple, and as you can see, I have a center here. Now I'll have either all the centers will be solved, or two of them will be, and these four won't. So what we can do now. Let's just spin, say, the right or the left of all this ring of kind of ring of centres here. We can spin the right 
uh, for like two times until these these sentences line up and and so these ones will start. So now let's move on to the edges. Okay, so the first step to solving the edges is to get them all in positions like this one here, this green and red, it lines up with the green and red. Now it doesn't actually have to be twisted correctly, that's the final step. But it just needs to be in the right place. So how we're going to solve these centers is we're going to split them into three rings. So remember before when I was talking about the centers being rings. Now the these edges are also in rings. So this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, kind of going in kind of a ring around around the cube. Like a kind of circle shape, although it's actually a cube shape. Now, that's the first part of the possibility. They're all cells, so they are all here. The second possibility is they both need to be sort. These two, two of them, two adjacent edges need to be swapped, and two adjacent edges need to be swapped, which is the second possibility. The third possibility is where. Two edges need to be swapped uh, from here to here and from here to here, so in kind of X fashion. Now I don't seem to have one of these here, so I'll be back with one of them. Just I have one right now, and as you can see, this one here is um, needs to be swapped with this one here. This one here needs to be swapped with this one here. So that's our third case. Now let's go and solve. Okay, so when we're solving this, we want to look for one that's in the adjacent position, so these two need to be swapped, and these two need to be swapped here. So, we want to hold a pair at the top, and a pair at the bottom. Now, the algorithm that we're just going to do, will flop these two, and flop these two, but it will also flop these two, and flop these two here. So, we've got a little we have a case here, so we need this, this needs to go here, and this one needs to go here, so that's good, that's good, that's going to work. And that one needs to go there, and that one needs to go there, obviously. So, let's do the algorithm. So it is right to up, right to up. And there we have it, the cube sort. Now, it won't necessarily all be lined up perfectly like this. They'll be out of position, probably a bit like, like this here, a bit like this. But, yeah, all the edges will be in the correct position, or... The ones that you flopped will be. These ones, I can't guarantee anything. Okay, so sometimes we'll have uh, one of two cases that are different to the one I've just shown you then. Now, this is the first one, where you, where you have these two that need to be flipped, these two that need to be flipped, these two that need to be flipped, these two here that need to be flipped, these two that need to be flipped, and these two that need to be flipped. So basically, each uh, each of the rings has kind of X, X case where but the opposite ones need to be flipped. So, how we solve this is we first of all, what we're going to do is solve one. So, let's, because when we do the algorithm, it'll flip these two, flip these two, these two, and these two here. So, we do the algorithm, so just right two, up, right two, up. And you see this middle layer will now be in position. Now, you'll then find that you then have a, a case where you need these two need to be flipped and these two need to be flipped. So you bring it down like that, and then you have these two need to be flipped still and these two need to be flipped still. So then you're just going to do the outcome again to so hold these to the top, hold these at the bottom, and then go like this. Right to up, right to up, and there you have it. You have all the edges in the correct position. Let's move on to the second case. Okay, so when we have a case like this, when these two need to be flipped and these two need to be flipped, we have a problem because when these edges are solved, we don't want to screw them up, do we? But if we do the algorithm, it not only flops these two and these two, but it also flops these two and these two here. So, we have a problem. But, I'm telling you now, when you have these two and these two that need to be flopped, and these four are solved, you always have 
these two that need to be swapped, and these two need to be swapped. So, it means that when you do the algorithm, so it's right to, up, right to, up. Yes, it will swap them too, but then you need to do the algorithm again to swap these two and these two, so you can do it again. Two, up, right two, up, and as you can see, that will have put back these edges here, and they will be solved. So the first one undoes it, and then the second one put it back. So I hope I've made that very clear. Now let's move on to the next step. Okay, so as you may have noticed, um, these pieces are in the right place. So the green and the purple match up with the green and purple. And I think you'll know if you have learned the Rubik's Cube. So, um, yeah, so these these pieces, um, as you see, they're not, they're not oriented correctly, are they? They're not put in place of the green, like, matches up to the green and the purple doesn't match up to the purple. So, what we need to do here is do another algorithm. And it's really, really simple. All we do is do one, two, three, four. And then do that as many times as you need to. To be able to, uh, to, be able to orientate the, this ring of edges that, that we're holding towards us. So, these back ones here and these front ones here, that's the ring of edges we're going to use. And so let's do that again. Okay, so these are all in the right place, and I'm going to now flip them. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and it's off. Let's do it again. Let's do it backwards this time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. Sometimes it takes quite a few moves, but, you know, it solves it anyway. See you later. So, yeah, that was my uh, tutorial on the gear cube. Now, you need to be cautious with this cube, because when you're turning it, and then you turn it down, you sometimes get your fingers trapped in there, and it does hurt. So, yeah, caution cube. So, I think that's a thumbs up the video. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, if you liked it, like it, and if you loved it, subscribe, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!